I am Burner, leader among many of the Ghost Eels, and the junior captain of the Black Cat Pirates. In fact, I have just joined them recently. I look into these magistrates that tried to recruit our people, and I learned that they have been hosts to the legation of the capital and are moving now to close this chapter of the history of Hirosaka. It became clear that they are expected by everyone in power to make a decision about the fate of our previous lords, the Mot Clan. They have accepted this harsh responsibility. I commend those that advise them in this most difficult decision, especially Ikoma Tomoya and Nate. The next day, you see your guest off and you start preparing to the meeting to decide the fate of the, of the mod clan, or at least the pretenses of doing something. What is each of you doing in preparation to this? I think for Hajime, certainly the first thing I'm going to do is is brief Minoru in full on everything that Sun and I talked about. Even if we've already discussed it at this point, I think we're just going to like go over every facet of her argument and her frustrations with us not handling that so far. Um, so that I think he has all of the information presently in mind. But other than that, I think Hajime is just kind of going to, I know this is going to sound sort of weird, but contemplate what happened to the moth again, like try to go back over it in his mind and go over what he, what little he has been able to understand and get kind of gut feelings about and just sort of see if anything, you know, drops into place or starts to make a little bit more sense. Yuzume has been uh, researching the history of not the moth clan, but other minor clans that have gone extinct specifically ones that were absorbed by great clans. She wants to see if there's any sort of precedent, particularly with the phoenix and the dragon. She wants to see if the phoenix and the dragon have absorbed minor clans in the past, how they've done it, and what's happened to the land and the people who were part of the minor clan not specifically the samurai but everyone else like she wants to get a good idea of what would happen to Hirosaka if Isawa Nobu became the new daimyo of the moth she wants to get an idea of what would happen if Agashitoma became a daimyo of the moth like that's what she's been looking into lately Aiko has been reviewing the case files assembled in the magistrate station relating to local law within Moth territory. He has been reviewing through his mind the set of scrolls that Kitsushogo left that he reviewed before sending off to the Emerald office. He has been looking over the different cultures and traditions of the Moth, what are unique to them from his time in the community center, from chatting with Sahu. He has overall been reviewing to get himself in a proper mindset to understand the moth the best he can and represent their interests in the upcoming discussions. Minoru has been a making sure that with every one of his Yuriki knows about the fact that Hante Amira was with the moth clan and very well could have survived. Hante Amira as an important reminder because it has been a while for us is and is the child of the emperor and a consort. She was at Winter Court. She was supposed to be presented at Winter Court, but was remained with the Moth Clan for reasons unknown. Is that correct, Ludo? Yeah, it is fair to say that. And making sure that all of us know that she's still missing and that we're going to play that knowledge close to the chest. The last thing we want is clans deploying full forces to tear apart the land looking for her, because that just creates problems for everyone. In addition, the only other thing Minoru really wants to do is he wants to review, for lack of a better term, how strong these guys' claims to be the inheritors of the moth are. Are they married to a cousin who was a moth? Or are they, you know, my grandmother was a member of the moth clan and just trying to establish because he knows that's because that's probably going to be their biggest argument is they're both going to claim to be as closely related as possible. Why, as I said, Hina tries to contemplate the place of the mod, the whole things with the fire, uh, firefighter gangs, the whole things with the pirates, uh, surprise, hentai, and uh, the visit of Shizue. Why the next morning 
is Asahini such emotional turmoil? I think it's mostly just being on edge. Like there's kind of so many factors at play here. Some we need to keep secret, some that we need to like, you know, that we need to be acting on. There are so many people we have to appease. I think that like just the idea of trying to make the best decision for Hirosaka, but also the one that will cause the least, I mean, like probably cause us to have the least friction between the parties present. And then just the actual uncertainty of what happened to this clan? Why are they all just gone? Like kind of all of that just sort of compounding for him. I think it's just this constant like loop of all of these things just kind of swirling around in his head and, and being just stressful. So, Asahina, why don't you describe as your favorite food stand? Asahina's favorite food stand is, I feel like it's probably like yakitori. Um, it's just a, a bunch of little, like a bunch of little skewers. Um, and they have a very specific grilling tare that they put on the outside of the, the outside of the skewers as they grill. And the quality of the chicken that they use is really nice. The vegetables, when they use them, they're extremely fresh, but it's that tare because they make it they have like a mother like a mother pot they kind of keep adding to so it's become this really rich like smoky but like sweet perfectly balanced like sort of coating that kind of forms this perfect glaze and uh yeah it pretty much just enhances the flavor of literally anything that gets grilled in it i also think it stays relatively busy and it has like a pretty decent crowd of regulars but i think it also probably is not one of the better known spots in town which is one of the reasons that he likes it because it can still be it's still a very calm environment for him he can still kind of go there and relax and just eat and you know not be packed in like sardines which is pleasant so you are standing there as you eat for the morning and you see that uh, they are preparing some bento boxes and you suddenly get the impression that uh, there's something between that bento box and the whole of Hirosaka. And you realize that the town is like a bento, that uh, if you think about all the intricacies of what it takes to get every single ingredient there, and then you think of the process of cooking, it is overwhelming. Everything that goes from procuring and preparing and growing, everything that goes inside. But when it's closed, it's just a treasure. And if you think only on the people that get that pento and receive that pento, you realize that is what Hirosaka is, is a bento box that uh, you have been too involved into the nitty gritty of uh, how things happen instead of just letting them happening. You're just impatiently messing with the stuff as the poor cook tries to prepare the box instead of waiting your turn. And you realize that you are caretakers of the bento box. Your job is to make sure that it's there and it's going to be there for the people that come with it. And messing with the cook and messing with the farmer and messing with the fisherman are not exactly part of that. We see Hajime. He has a skewer in hand and he's just been staring like just with it right in front of his mouth at this stack of bento boxes. And he just sort of very slowly leans forward and bites off. It's uh, it's chicken thigh with uh, green onion in between each piece. He just bites off sort of one section and stares at that for a long time, chews very slowly, and then pays and walks off to go talk to Minoru. Yuzuma, you are looking into the past history in relation to handling Minor clans? Yep. What ended up happening to the library of law, which Yuzumi came for the first time that she visited uh, Hirosaka? So it's it's burnt down. It's it's gone. It was in the it was in the original magistrate's district, which was lost. So I imagine that all of those books were lost and she is working from her own collection. Some of her collection are copies of what was in Hirosaka's original library. It's why she went in the first place, but she didn't copy everything. It has requisition copies that might be on the other libraries of the Otomo or uh, on the Emerald Castle. And she's sitting down and going through that and looking into the past. It seems like the Phoenix have an ambiguous relationship with those that leave the family. 
even if something as prestigious as getting to find a new clan. So they tend to have a very paternalistic attitude towards those clans at the best. And you see a hole around one of those clans, the Snake Clan, which seems to be completely obliterated overnight. And the Phoenix refused to say anything. So you get the feeling that uh, unless the Phoenix can keep a monopoly on their secrets or gain something from that, or t- to lord over their uh, minor branches, they don't seem that interested into that. And the dragon, they don't really have created many many minor clans, but uh, they seem to be very protective of those, especially with the special relationship that they have with the dragonfly. As you go to that, you notice that uh, when you go about clans that have been... Uh, Dissolve it and you see various names. You see the shark, you see the firefly, you see again the snake, you see the bar. You notice a mon that is similar to the Mot Mon, and you think, oh, this is the butterfly clan or something. But then you look careful and it is a Mot, and you go looking at it and uh, you see mentions of a Kaikoga family. And you go deeper into that and you see another variant of the Mon in a document from the 5th century. And you realize, as you go further, that the Mot has been extinguished at least three times in the past. Ooh. Do you, is there any mention, is there any mention of the cause of those extinctions? None at all. It is as secretive or as the snake or at the first extinction of the hair clan. Okay, that's that's an interesting bit of info to tuck away. Thank you. But it seems that the second version of the mod, they were on the mountains between the Phoenix territory and Otosan Ushi. And the territories, they defaulted to the Asaku before they falling to undisclosed enemies. Is there a relation to the dragon in any of the Moth clan's prior history? It seems the founder of the first incarnation of the the Moth was, if not dragon themselves, they married someone from the Togashi family. So we have historical precedent, but we also have a mystery about why these two somewhat secretive, magical slash mystical clans might want to keep the moth close. Excellent. <laughs> All right. So, Aiko, you were looking into lineage, right? No, wait, you're looking... No, it was Minor that was looking into lineage. You were looking into the culture of the mod, correct? That is correct. You secluded yourself back to your office and you think how it has been like living near the near the peasants on the last weeks and uh, the affairs of the mod and you consult the traditions and laws of the mod and for the most part they seem to comply with the overall issues that come from on top but you notice that there does not seem to be any chief magistrates or judges among the roles. And uh, you realize that there are instead what the, they are on the notes as councils of juries. And you don't see many details about who is involved on in that. But whenever there seems to be some criminal activity... It seems the mod called for one of those to decide what to do rather than uh, leave to a magistrate to drag this to the governor or to a chief magistrate or make it an emerald crime. It seems that they evicted as much as possible and only when it meddled into the affairs of another clan, they actually called into the emerald magistrates. And you figure that that is probably why they had such problems dealing with the other clans because they've started to encroach into their territory. Interesting. Aiko will take that information and file it internally as he begins to set himself for the hearings between the two clans. 
Minero, you are checking on lineage. You look into the connections, and it seems like um, like Tuma uh, has an actual blood relation with the uh, with the the mod. One of his grandmothers is from originally from the mod clan, but at the best, Nobu is a distant relative of the mod. It is not clear exactly if it is someone that studied with the mod, someone that was adopted into the mod, someone that uh, for one reason or another became Brunin and later joined the Phoenix. But it seems like uh, he is more culturally attuned to the mod clan. Because it's pretty clear that Tuma has the blood, but he has absolutely no idea what the mod are about. And you notice that uh, there are reports about some unorthodox interests on the part of Nobu on the way in like where how spirits and humans and animals think and what it means to have autonomy within the constricts of the, the dictates of heaven. And you could figure out that, that that could have been something written by a mod from what you've seen of the mark that they left in Osaka. And you get the feeling that if you pressure Nobu, you can learn a bit more about what the mod were, but you are completely clueless about who is the most likely candidate and what would happen should any of them the custody of the family future. So it's the end of the scene and we cut to as you prepare to receive one or both of the mod claimants. So why don't you describe me where you are receiving them and what you have waiting for them? So we're definitely meeting them at the magistrate station at whatever stands for a courthouse in there. Have a morning meeting with Toma have an afternoon meeting with Nobu, and then an evening meeting with both of them. Oh, where are you receiving them? Because it's an informal meeting, just to let them know what we want them to bring to the evening meeting, let's have everyone, let's meet with them in, would Ico's gardens be too casual? How dare you? My gardens are very professional. That being said, it's probably the least casual setting of all of our homes. It's not a formal, they can't... <laughs> They cannot um, use any sort of discussion we have there to leverage into later negotiations, but it's formal enough that they know we're here to talk about something important, is my logic. Is that correct? It does seem very place sating after like dodging them for weeks on end. I'm down for it. Like I think after dodging them for weeks on end, we either officially meet with them in the courthouse, both of them at the same time, or we do your plan. As you are getting for the meeting, you see that there are people gathering near the courthouse for a meeting of their own. And you zoom in, you recognize two of them. And the third one seems to be remotely familiar. One of them towering over the others is Uzagi now. And uh, next to her is Kitsune Anand. And trailing behind them, it seems to be a falcon that you kind of remember seeing him in Mamikake, kind of unsure. This is great. So we have the, the minor clan representatives all meeting for something. Yeah, they are coming toward the courthouse for something. Would Yuzume have an idea of the uh, schedule at the courthouse of when which rooms would be used at the magistrate station? I feel like she would have looked into it to have booked a space in advance. Uh, you remember that uh, the big house on the courthouse, the meeting room, which you usually, usually don't use because you make everything on the backstage behind the, the dais. Uh, the actual the big reception room of the courthouse where there seems to be some delegations and where you summon the, the spirit of the ancestors when needed. You remember that it has been uh, uh, booked by Otomo Kazuko and Otomo Ideko. Team in our cleaners, they seem to be shutting in front of the courthouse and uh, 
uh, Agasha, Tuma, and uh, Miromoto Sanai are nowhere in sight yet. So before she asks to be excused for a moment, uh, Yuzume will lean over and quietly say to Minoru, will you permit me to have a word with them and find out some more information before our meeting begins? Absolutely, Yuzume-san. Go. Yuzume will approach the minor clan representatives, say hello, give them a big smile, perhaps a bigger smile for Usagi now, if not because they actually got to hang out in the Hiramori swamps, but also because she has the distinct feeling that Anand is just not super thrilled with her existing. You can see by Anand noticing you that uh, he's not very pleased to see you before the meeting. And Anand just gives a curt nod in acknowledgement and now bows deeply to you respectfully and introduces uh, I'm sure you have made already acquaintance with uh, our dear Kitsune, but uh, I heard that uh, you have not met Toritake Makoto before. And uh, Toritake Makoto bows deeply and he puts, uh, he puts his hands together. No, we did not have the opportunity. Uh, I was actually looking forward to meet the new Emerald Magistrate after they visited a crab territory. I hope you'll give us the opportunity to correct that oversight now, Toritaka-san. If you would like to meet Bayushi Minoru, he is close by, but if you think that it may run too closely to your appointment, we can always organize something for tomorrow, perhaps? Yes, unfortunately we are on a tight schedule. We did not even have time to get in and uh, to prepare ourselves from the travels of the road. And you can see that, yeah, they look pretty exhausted uh, and a bit annoyed. But, you know, when the Imperials call, the Imperials call. And now, not indeed, we'll only be returning to our lands or to the places where we serve as ambassadors next morning. There will be plenty of time, I hope. It would be nice to share a cup of tea with all of you. I remember the last time we shared tea. I heard that uh, you have got yourself a little place in town. Perhaps we might share a bit more than tea. And now hints at you. Oh, absolutely. We can catch up on news, gossip, anything you like, my dear. Don't you worry. And I think she wants to make it like clear through her tone that she's not like... like I, I just want it so it's clear through her tone that she's not kind of going for the returning the sexy angle, but that she does genuinely want to spend time with her. Mm. Things about that for a moment. And she smiles. Hmm. It seems that you and Lady Lana share a few things, except that she does not even find the dance of Lady Dodgy appealing. Perhaps you should find common ground. In fact, my sister wanted to tell you something about her that she comes to mind. It seems she has returned home. Thank you for the information, Usagi-san. It's very considerate of you. And she does really mean that because, like, I think that now was sort of letting her down in a very polite way. That's probably something that Yuzume is kind of used to once she's made it clear to somebody that the physical aspect isn't something that she's that interested in. Would you look at that? And then the interrupts. And you can see that uh, one of the servants of the Imperials is coming out. It seems that uh, we are going to be seen by the Otomo now. See you later, Yuriki. Do enjoy your meeting, Ambassador. And as I found Q, uh, turning down the street, you see Tuma. This time actually focus on what is happening instead of talking with something or someone remotely. And Sanai, wearing ceremonial armor, approaching as he's designated Yojimbo, and they approach the complex. Aiko walks out to the the reception area from the, the meeting room and says, Honored representatives of 
of the Dragon, it is my most august pleasure to invite you into the office of the Emerald Championship under the guidance of Bayushi Minoru-sama, an Emerald Magistrate. Please follow me, and that will turn to lead them into the meeting room where Aiko has taken special care to set up a full tea set. In case that comes up, there are one or two servants waiting around corners in different rooms to fetch refreshments or objects if needed as the discussion goes on. Aiko flicks his fan lightly to signify the two seats for the dragon to sit at and then sets himself down at the left hand of Minoru. My nonchalantly takes his seat and crosses his arms. Oh, thankfully for receiving me, Emerald Magistrate. You have made the day for you and for Irasaka. I'm gonna take this whole mess out of your shoulders. Agasha-san, it's a pleasure to finally get to meet you face to face, to finally have this very important meeting. It's been so hectic in Hirosaka. I do apologize for the lateness of it. This is sim- this is simply a preamble to the meeting we'll be having later this evening, as I'm sure my missive to you from Aiko enlightened. I just merely wish to discuss what you're going to bring, your connection to the Moth Clan that leads you to officially claim to be their inheritor. And also, if I remember correct, both of these clans wanted to open a case into what happened to the Moth. Uh, that's correct. And my records state that you wish to open a formal investigation into what happened to the Moth. So I'm curious as to why you believe that an act of weather merits a formal investigation. As I said, I'm here to solve your problems. If we open a formal investigation, then it can be immediately solved by the new daimyo of the Kaikoga family in terms that safeguard the face and honor of everyone involved. It is an easy case that's going to get your job here done. And you're going to have a pretty nice report to present to the next Emerald Champion. Agasha-san, if there truly is malfeasance here leading to the Moth Clan's vanishing, I would not be able to simply hand it over to you. Something can make whole clans vanish like that. It is truly a matter for the Emerald Office. What are you talking, Emerald Magistrate? You just said it yourself. It was merely an accident of weather, an act of the fortunes. Well, in addition to that matter, am I correct in recording on my reports that your grandmother was a member of the Moth Clan? Correct. She married into the Agasha family. As you have noticed, uh, the dragon have uh, some interest in Inosaka. I heard that uh, you offered your patronage to one of our establishments for a while. The House of the Evergreens. It's a truly lovely example of an inn. But gosh, Asan, I am curious. I'm sure you've met my Yoriki. This is Hajime-san, Aiko-san. Yuzume-san. Didn't you uncover an interesting connection between the dragon and the moth? I just want to know if you can confirm, Agasha-san. Historically, yes, there have been other connections between the dragon and the moth, though this was a prior iteration of the clan, my lord. I do not know what effect this would have on Agasha-san's claim. I am merely curious if it factors into Agasha-san's claim. I don't see how so. I mean, I am a blood relation. As far as I know, you don't have anyone remotely close. And as for any historical curiosities, I'm an alchemist. I'm not an historian. I'm sure your people will do do a better job keeping you informed than me myself. Agashasan, I mean no offense. I'm simply, it is my job, it is my duty to gather as much information as possible. This way, when a new Emerald Champion is chosen, I can submit a full report of everything I've gotten up to in the lovely city of Hirosaka. Tonight at the meeting, I would like if you would bring any documentation you have, anything important that you feel is necessary. We're going to be having a meeting. Isawa Nobus will be there as well. Do you have any questions or requests for me, Agasha-san? 
we cannot wait until the Emerald Champion is appointed. What will be for the town during this year? What will be during the harvest? Are you willing to put this town in the line just because the obvious needs to be acknowledged? Agasha-san, I did not state that I would be waiting for the Emerald Champion to name the inheritor of Hirosaka. I merely stated that if my hand is forced and I must name one very soon, I wish to have reports so that my, my next master will understand why I did what I did. Well, I'm sure I can produce to you the notarized documents from the Otomo family about my lineage, uh, but it saddens me that you are even giving the time of today to someone that has no blood relation at all to the Mott clan. Akasha-san, I, I understand this must be very, very frustrating for you. You have traveled a great distance, and you do have a very strong claim on Hirasaka. I will freely acknowledge that. But I am also hearing about the possibility of cases involving the moth. I am hearing there are a great many things that I am not at liberty to share with you as we stand right now. I respect your position and I do truly feel for you, but you must give me some time. My gosh, I apologize for having kept you waiting this long. As your assistant knows, I bring a lot to Hirosaka, and my partnership and the, the dragon will probably do such endeavor in a way that is less draining upon the local resources and peoples. And he smiles and looks at Aiko as he says that. I'm sure you will see that no matter my strong claim, getting me and my own involved is the best for Hirosaka. You seem like a wise magistrate. I'm sure you will take the right call by Yoshisama. Well, Agasha-san, I thank you for your time. I do believe we have everything we need for tonight's meeting established here. Unfortunately, I do have another appointment I must attend to. I will be eager to receive you tonight. Very well, then. And he leaves, and Sanai lingers for a while. Stares at Ajim A and Minoru and then moves behind. As soon as they are out of earshot, as soon as Minoru is confident they're out of earshot, he just looks over at everyone. So that went about as well as I expected. I I have to agree. I expected about that level of pleasantness from our friends from the dragon. I think it went rather well, all things considered. We know that he is prepared to offer you an easy life in exchange for power. We know that he doesn't seem to care as much for what actually happened to the moth because of this. It sounds like he would make it a fairly open and shut case. Uh, We know Miramoto-san's opinions on that. He does have the stronger claim through his family, but... uh, I still think it behooves us to have an open mind when it comes to Isawa Nobu. He has a stronger claim through his family, and if we're being completely frank, seems to be very concerned with acquiring Hirosaka for the dragon. Has the manners of a crab? Yuzume-san, what what did you think? (laughs) If If I might, my lord, given my prior experience with Agasha Toma, He is not a details-oriented man. He will assume that things are going his way. I do not think that he would put the care and attention into stewarding these lands that they require if he treats it as any other business exchange. However, that all comes to naught if it doesn't matter in the end. If he legally is the one who should have Hirosaka, Are we in a position where we should even be trying to stop him? Well, and as I didn't inform our friend, we have no idea who should legally have Hirosaka if our, if Amira-sama survives, who's to say there's not other inheritors of the moth alive. Very well. I think that that may be the best approach to take when dealing with the both of them this evening. Perhaps uh, we hint that we might wish to look for other survivors before making a final decision. 
I believe the only bargaining chip we may have tonight would be revealing to Agasha-san and Asawa-san the fact that there might be a missing Hante, which leads us to believe there might be missing Moth, which just seems like the most absolutely ridiculous giving of information to get a little advantage. Maybe Nobu will give us something. In addition to that, Minoru-sama, it is worth noting that both parties seem very pressed for time. I imagine that telling them to wait longer while we go and investigate something that may or may not exist, I have to assume they would be displeased at best and potentially, well, may potentially cause us significant problems in the future at worst. Let's hear out our friend in the Phoenix, perhaps, my lord, and then we can decide if we reveal anything about Hante and Mira in the meeting with both of them. So, Nobuo approaches a company by Kizuki, and Kizuki is all smiles, uh, especially to Ajime. And Nobu seems pretty quiet, just going along with. Uh, the regular courtesies as expected and waving his long fingers around as he waits for anything to come from this. Ludo, can I do a very subtle roll to see if all of that hand waving is some sort of uh, calmy nonsense? Because Yuzume knows what it's like to invoke subtly. <laughs> Why are you feeling so stressful? Why are your emotions to the top? Why are you so in edge? So Yuzume is is stressed because this morning speaking with Toma was stressful. She knows that the meeting going on with the Otomo and the Minor Clan representatives is going to complicate whatever meeting that the Emerald Magistrate team has with the Moth claimants. And now she's seeing something that is typically a, or some, she's seeing something that could be a Soshi technique from, from someone in the Phoenix. Now, Nobu might have other reasons, like he might not be able to speak, but even if that's the case, she's, the stress is making her suspicious that he's invoking and trying to do it subtly. And she would want to know why that is immediately. Like that would put her on edge. Like for all she knows, he might be trying to listen in on the meeting with the minor clan attendants right now. You realize that he just dismissed spirits that were bound to surveying the place. And you just realize to your horror that uh, he has been doing this for a while. He, he has been monitoring and attaching the spirits to the workers as this place is being built. You don't know exactly for how long or what you he heard, but uh, you know that he has been monitoring the complex pretty close. Nice. Okay. Yeah, uh, so is that legal? Well, that's the thing. It's not illegal. And it's not really something we can prove. That is the problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, because the thing that can prove is not admissible as evidence. And that's not all. You are pretty sure that he might have read at least the surface thoughts of people that have been to the complex recently. Yuzume has realized that Nobu has been spying on them for all of this time, and she's not terribly happy about that, but tries to keep that hidden. Um, she at least is is used to this type of magic and dealing with this type of magic and perhaps this type of person, and that, I think, calms her down a little bit. This isn't a completely unknown scenario for her. So once introductions have been made and everybody's sitting comfortably, she you know, folds her hands in front of her, looks Nobu directly in the eye and says, it's wonderful to finally get the chance to meet you, Isawa-san. I understand that you are quite well informed about the goings on in town. And uh, as a result, I feel there's not really that much need for us to beat around the bush. Uh, would you like to let us know what you would contribute as daimyo of the Moth Clan and Hirosaka? My priority is first and foremost to continue my research on Impendent. 
my secondary objective is to make sure that whatever secrets the the mod kept, whatever unique culture they had developed, that is not lost during the transition of power. I know I don't have the best claim, but I think I am the best chance that the mod have at surviving in a manner that will at least acknowledge the unique character of the Kaikoga. Asawa-san, forgive me for prying, but what is your area of research? Nature of the mind. That genuinely does sound fascinating. The mind of men or spirits or... Yes. All right, Asawa-san. You do present a bold argument. You're familiar. Are you familiar with Toma? Uh, I have not had the pleasure to make his acquaintance, but everyone in the Empire knows about Takashi Toma, and half of the Empire consumes his products. That's true. He is a pillar of his clan and of the Empire. Isawa-san, I'm sure you know that I'll require any paperwork confirming your distant claim any when we have our second meeting tonight. The Mod Clan, as you have found during your time here, are not the most queen at keeping clear records or giving a proper account of whatever is happening inside. And my relationship with the clan won't be included in such matters. Isawa-san, I have the records of the Moth. Bring what you can to the meeting tonight. I understand you wanted to open a formal case into what happened to the Moth. I don't believe that it has been a mere accident or simple trick of time and weather to have that happen at the moment it happened. It is of the utmost importance for the Phoenix clan to learn exactly what happened. Isawa-san, do you have anything other than suspicion on that? I have been contacting the spirits for a while, and I have communicated with some of the powerful yokai of the region. They indeed report some kind of instability. And in fact, I know something has happened recently, which has led one of the guardian spirits that the mod had bound with to go on a rampage. Just, well, last night. Where would this rampage have taken place, Asawa-san? I am still not aware. I only sensed a powerful presence when that I was familiar being activated. That should only happen if there was a spiritual threat. And the fact that I can tell you that instead of a Gashasan, well, that's the best argument that I can tell you, right? Isawa-san, I believe you've given me a lot of interesting information. I will be excited and eager to receive you tonight at our meeting with Agashatoma. But I do have a very important appointment I have to keep. I just have one thing to say to you, as you consider, Magistrate. This investigation will happen. Either there is an official one or not. And my research and protecting the secrets of the Mod Clan will too happen. If I do that under the authority of the Daimyo of the Mod, I will be self-guarding the, the secrets of my family from any external threats. If I do it as a phoenix samurai, I think I don't need to tell you what will happen to those secrets. And he bugs. And lastly, my Yojimbo has something to ask you. And Kizuki approaches and bows deeply, one, ha uh, one hand in a fist against another. By Yoshi-sama, I would offer myself as a candidate for your Riki. It would be an honor for me to serve you. Kizuki-san... You do come highly recommended. I have heard much about you from Aiko san. Let me finish my arrangements for today. I will be in contact, Kazuki san. Where are you staying? I am currently staying at the inn uh, outside of town. You might have heard about the house of the porcelain heron. I have heard much about it. Kazuki san, I will be in contact tomorrow. Wait for my message. And the two of them leave, and you zoom in. You follow them. Isawa-san, a moment, if you will. Yes, Shasi sam How may I serve you? You mentioned regional yokai and the spirit on a rampage. I have communed with some of the spirits in the area as well. And I wonder, the one on the rampage, do you know if it was from Yumedo? Yes, it is a spirit of Yumedo. Should you 
ever need any assistance in this area, please keep me informed. If you could keep me informed, should you sense any similar disturbances? As I know that the moth did use, I know that the moth did request that spirits from Yumedo protect some of their outlying territories. And if any of them are in danger, we would need to set out immediately to prevent as much destruction as we can, as we can. Yes, you should be aware of that beforehand, but it's probably hard for a priest by herself to do that. Yes, probably should be good if you, on the meantime, you will replace some of the precautions and defenses that the mod have. But don't worry, the rampage, well, that's the only word befitting to describe what happened and the ripples on the spirit world. But nobody that did not deserve was harmed. I'm sure there were no innocents that were destroyed at the hand of this spirit. I see. Thank you, Asawa-san. Be careful, Shrasi-san. The spirits are overwhelming around here. She uh, nods and heads back in to see the others. I assume you have a debriefing the four of you before evening, right? Correct. Um, and Minoru's going to open up just my honorable Yuriki. Do you see any way out of this? Personally? Yes. My lord, Isawa Nobu is the better choice for the spiritual safety of the region, as well as maintaining the legacy of the moth. If their claims were equal... There would be no question. I concur. I do not think that Agashatuma has the best interests of Hirasaka at heart and has perhaps many of his own interests at heart. I think he has little to no concern for the legacy of the Moth Clan whatsoever. We can't delay them forever. I don't know how much longer we honestly can delay them. There is no way that there will be any support for Nobu's claim right now. I imagine that Agashatoma could easily seek to have Isawa Nobu's claim repealed simply based on his closer relation while we have no Emerald Champion. Is that true? I'm flying off the seat of my pants here. It definitely implied that. And at the very least, it could lead to war between the clans over a place. I I think I see a solution. Hajime-san. He looks up. Yes, Minoru-san. Minoru is staring hard at Hajime, like full peering into his soul. You can try. Hajime-san, is, is the Empire the will of the Emperor, or is it the people within the Empire? Hajime is caught off guard by the question and considers it for a very long moment and says, to my mind, Minoru-sama, the people, though the individuals within the populace change, The people are a constant. The emperor is a changing force. And one must know that in order to even maintain an empire, there has to be people to support it. And I think that's all he says. I I think he just kind of nods and uh, says, I know not if this is the answer you are looking for, but it is the one that I am most able to give within this moment. Yuzume-san. My lord. I need you to prepare a legal document stating in the most strict legal understanding that both of these men are going to agree to whatever choice is made. I want it to be as binding as possible. I understand contracts and treaties are broken all of the time, Yuzume-san, but I need one that is strong. I can certainly draw one up, my lord, but I have a feeling that one of them will not sign it. Hajime-san, I want you to stay with Yuzume-san. Make sure she is safe with all of the mysteries and terrible things going around. I don't want anything terrible to come with her. Call the Yuriki in as well. I have a meeting I have to go to. Ludo, I would like to send a servant to ask if Otomo Kazuko would be willing to meet with me. I assume you're sending a letter, right? Absolutely. You get the reply back and it is her... I thank you for your missive, Ayushisama. However, I cannot receive you today because I have important guests, ambassadors representing minor clans from the neighborhood. I'm sure you understand. I'll be sure to accommodate you tomorrow. After Minoru gets that letter, he crumples it up, 
walks back in. Well, when they meet tonight, I'm going to have to feed them something to let them know that they're going to have to wait for my answer. I'll need a delaying tactic. So, so what are we doing? We're we're having the meeting with the with the two of them, and then we're writing up a proposal as quickly as we can. No, we're having the meeting with the two of them, and I guess Minoru would. This is the brief before the meeting. We're going to meet with them. We're going to let them submit their copies of their claims. And tomorrow, I have a very important meeting with Kazuko. I must attend to, and then we will go from there. Very well. I will draw up the documentation that you've requested, and when it's time to meet, we'll have copies ready. Draw up the document. Don't have copies made yet, Yazume-san. We'll need it later. Very well, my lord. Honestly, like, the angle that Minoru presented with, like, you know, there's, like, a lot of threats around and, like, we're about to do something big and important, I think he's a lot more on edge than he planned on being, just sitting, sort of watching someone do paperwork. So I feel like he's kind of trying his hardest not to pace and, like, doing the most that he can to try and not be a distraction for Yuzume. But I doubt very much that he has much to contribute to the actual work itself. He's mostly just, like, on edge as far as just... Okay, so are we are we doing this in, like, a separate separate space or just right here, right now? Because I feel that Yuzume would want to consult some text. My understanding was separate space. We went somewhere else, I thought. Cool. All right, so... Yeah, while Hajime's pacing, um, he's unable to just occasionally look up at him and just then look down because the pacing is very distracting and eventually will say, will you take a seat and have some tea or at the very least read a book, Asahina-san? He notices what he's doing, that, he's, that he is pacing and sits down and pours himself some tea and then in a voice that suggests that this question has not occurred to him either in a very long time or ever he says what book should i read yuzume just has her mouth open slightly in disbelief asahina-san what kind of books do you usually read he sips his tea and sort of like is he's trying to look as I think dignified as possible but he is very pointedly not looking at her and he says I do not spend much time reading in fact I do not believe that I have spent much time or any time reading this year so far and sort of looks away out the window I don't imagine that the compounds library has anything terribly interesting but and she backs up away from the table she's sitting at and starts browsing through the stacks oh here we are uh this one is about some of your family's history and she just flicks through it very quickly like trying to find something that might look interesting and then all of a sudden it's like aha there's uh apparently in 832 there was an Asahina duelist who had a duel. Would you like to read that one? It's page 908. He looks at the book for a minute and it's sort of a weird, I think he's not necessarily being as cognizant of his expression right now. And I think it's probably obvious to Yuzume that there is, when she mentions, like when she actually like looks up and notices that she's been talking about his family for a minute, he looks a little bit displeased with that. Like he just doesn't look, it looks like he's trying not to say no necessarily, but he's trying to find a way not to make that apparent. And I think he goes over to the same shelf and he says, do you think there is anything around here speaking on the Kakita family? I find their history to be more interesting to me. She just drops this, you know, over 908 page book on the floor next to her and uh, lets her shoulders sink for a second. And it's much easier to find books about the Kakita to do with dueling. And she just can find a few that are to do with like legal precedent and uh, history. It, it's more to do with ruling on duels than anything, but she's very quickly able to find a small stack and hand those over. Yeah, I think he picks one of those up and starts flipping through it and says, thank you, yuzume son. This looks to be more, I think, within my wheelhouse. And he grins a little bit. Well, Akikita do have a lot to say on this sort of subject as well as every other subject, she says, and uh, goes back to finish her documentation. 
Hajime reads, I think he's still trying to, he probably doesn't get very far because he's trying to kind of stay very aware of their surroundings, but he's definitely less fidgety about it. The Emerald Lands, their wonders and horrors were played by Ludo. They can be found at Dilethiel on Twitter and Ichio, as well as at Heroes of the Republic. Bayushi Minoru was played by Brad. He can be found on Discord at BZAJ1648 and at Twitter at BZAJDABarbarian. Sakai no Doji Eiko was played by Evan. He can be found on Facebook as Evan Strite. Discord as PushyMushy1871, and on fellow L5R actual play, Secondhand Strife. Soshi Yuzume was played by Charlie. She can be found on Discord as Rhysalian and on Twitter at BowserJ, where you can find links to her L5R blog. Asahina Hajime was played by Sam. He can be found on Discord and Reddit as Live From My Basement and on Instagram at SJ Sedlacek. This is a Court Games podcast. You can find out more about them at Court Games Pod on Twitter or at their site, courtgamespod.com. Legend of the Five Rings is the intellectual property of Fantasy Flight Games. Radio, where gamers roll.